Welcome back, denizens of the Comic Book Dojo. JT McRoberts here with you once again, and I'm going to walk you through another fun little Monday morning vlog. Let's get things started. There are always a lot of interesting things happening out there in the entertainment or comic book sphere or even the movie sphere, and I thought I would talk about um, a notion that I saw pop up near the end of 2023 amongst the uh, indie comic book creators out there and I thought we would talk about that idea just a little bit so let me adjust my screen over so how are you doing happy uh, new year to you thanks for sticking with the channel for another year we had a lot of fun fun times during 2023 and we're gonna have even more fun in 2024 as we continue working on our graphic novel I thought I'd share this with you because this brought me a little bit of joy over the holiday. This was one of my present gifts to myself for the holiday, if you know what I mean. Um, I picked up um, the last book in the series of, of encyclopedias of, about pop culture, mainly superheroes, supervillains, adventure heroes, monsters, aliens, and spaceships, I think is the name of the, the other one. But anyway, this was one that, that had eluded me. I had a copy of it for several years and then I misplaced it. And um, I'm a completionist. I know a lot of collectors like myself out there are just like that and it drives me crazy if I can't uh, if I can't complete a series or a set and it drives me doubly crazy if I actually had already completed that series and then I somehow misplaced it again. So I got that which is fun to, to complete that series and then I treated myself to this for my birthday, John Burns X-Men Artist's Edition, formerly an Artifact Edition. But dying to dig into that baby just came in at the end of the week so I know you're dying to find out what am I talking about so let's switch our screen around here and show you oh there's the lovely comic jutsu website let's bring that down and bring this down here you go it all started with this what is everyone's thoughts on this? I never like it when people make it sound like you have an obligation to promote others. There are obviously pros to promoting others, but there are a ton of cons that could hurt the creator. Regardless, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Of course, I got this on the the X Twitter indie comic sphere from one of the individuals I created that I follow. <laughs> Excuse me, I haven't created anyone on there other than myself. Um, but I've removed the individual names just because I'm not trying to put anyone on blast over this. I just want to talk about this so-called moral obligation. And um, I don't want to get involved in any of the drama attached to anything that uh, that is discussed herein in this series of tweets. Uh, so it started with this. He attached these screenshots. All artists have a moral obligation to assist other artists. Anyone who focuses solely on their own success while making no effort to lift up others is a genuinely bad person bad wrong fun art creators promote creators at least that's how things should go you know I don't know what to tell you there guys um, on my end of the spectrum I agree with the notion that we should help each other but it's no sort of obligation that's for certain I spent uh, the better part of the past 12 years promoting other independent filmmakers through uh, my work with the Mad Monster Party Film Festival. I mean, we screened films all from all across North Carolina, all across the East Coast, all across America, from other countries, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Thailand, everything. And um, you really, if you do that stuff, you just have to, you have to do it for the sake of doing it just because you want to promote and share your love for the art with the other people involved and you really can't uh you can't expect anything in return you can't have those kind of of demands both on the other artists involved or on oneself you know the only real moral obligation that we have is to continue to work on our art and that is the way it goes keep working on our art whatever we have to do so here's one of the responses 
this is my biggest problem with a lot of indie comic discussions, and this doesn't apply to the blank discourse on blank. Stop worrying so much about private matters that don't concern you. Well, absolutely. If you're asking all these questions, you need to get a life. The only thing that matters when it comes to you knowing what a creator is doing on the business end is this. Is the book getting made? Am I getting the book I paid for? Will there be another? Talking about Kickstarters and Indiegogos and various crowdfunding platforms. All these questions are pointless, at least for the last question. If Blank at some point only ever does an average 200000 to 500000 on his books, he's still in the 1% of indie comics creators. Also, if a book does... 100k at pre-launch, it can easily get to 200 to 500k in 5 to 10 years. As business people, play the long game and stop worrying about all the details that don't concern you. And for the creators out there who are taking part in these discussions, worry about your own book and how you're going to succeed. That is exactly where we are in Comic Jutsu, which is why <laughs> I'm just working, working, working when we get to the point where we can share those things with you people. Um, safely and smartly we will do that but until then i'm just focused on my own book but uh, this is part of our creating content which i am not morally obligated to do do not turn yourself into a content creator you know you have it has to be completely secondary or even tertiary to your actual the actual work itself you know for me I mean, of course everyone wants to succeed but you know you have to find that fine line of of how far are you willing to go how, how much will you compromise from your platonic ideal that's in your head of, of what you want to create, how you want to, to give that to the world, the interaction you want to have with it. You have to find that fine line and plant your flag on one side of it from moral to, un, to amoral, from ethical to unethical. You know, where do you, what works for you? I had a small goal this January to hit $100 on my online store. I met that goal yesterday. It was fantastic. Get back to work, everyone. Let's make 2024 great. Well, I like that notion. Okay, so the response to him was then, that's his initial, what's everyone's thoughts on this? Here's, by the way, he continued, the, the guy who posed the question, um, which I don't have anything against, I wouldn't mind promoting his work and I thought about you know pimping his his ex Twitter for him but um, I don't like to put people feel like people are being put on blast so that's why I didn't do that by the way I love promoting my friends and peers and have done so for the last five years but I never felt obligated to okay good it's it's been called self-centered selfish etc when I've closed my doors on draw and talk for guests and it still never stopped me from promoting others marketing is important relationships even more so respect the grind that's my two cents in my opinion, a rising tide helps all boats, but you need to be smart about it. Will my audience on YouTube like this content? If so, you should. My YouTube audience might not like it, but what about my social media followers? Um, okay, so speaking from the point of 12 years of promoting other independent creators through the film festival, as I was just talking about, um... You can definitely say it doesn't really, really boost you. I mean, there's kind of a sharing of audiences and that the audience that you create um, is exposed to the work that that you're you're promoting or, or that you're sharing about. But you don't necessarily get a bump from it. Sometimes you would. If there's like a, a creator who has a hot little following of their own and you cross-pollinate, so to speak, you'll get a little bump from that that initial interaction but for the most part you know you're always going to have a higher interaction of content that's just geared towards the masses and you know they want to talk about you know Star Wars movies or the latest thing on Disney Plus or you know Yellowstone or whatever whatever's going on whatever's hot in pop culture at that exact moment Barbie Oppenheimer Barbenheimer that sort of thing that's where it, where you're really going to drive your interactions with um, with your fan base or your consumer base or whatever they're called. But at the end of the day, it has to at the beginning and the end of the day, in the middle of the day, it has to be about creating your work and solidifying. This is what I'm creating. This is why I'm creating it. This is how why I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. And I'm going to put it out there to everyone. And, getting to that point and just continuing that process over and over and over again and creating a body of work 
should be the primary concern in one's mind. And it's up to you if you think you are selling out. If you're okay with that, if the price point you can you can achieve is make, helps you sleep at night in silk sheets, then go for it. Or if you are you feel like you're morally obligated to tell a certain type of story and not compromise on your various ideals, then do that. If that's not bringing you the money that you want, well, that's up to you. You know, you either continue to be happy about it, live the life of the ascetic, which is basically what we do at Comic Book Dojo, or, you know, you could possibly change it and say, well, you know, look at all that money they're making over there on the other side of the aisle, and uh, let me go over there and see what I can do with it. So... There you go. Very interesting subject all the way around. What do you think? Um, do ind independent creators have a moral obligation to promote other independent creators? Let me know down in the comments. Of course, as always, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I enjoy talking to you. Let me know what we should talk about next and uh, keep on creating. Superior!